So you also write, I think, let, let's go back to the brain. You write that Plato gave us the idea that the human brain has three brains in it, three forces, uh, which is kind of a compelling notion. Uh, you disagree. First of all, what are the three parts of the brain and uh, why do you disagree? So Plato's description of the psyche, which for the moment we'll just assume is the same as a mind. There are some scholars who would say, you know, a soul, a psyche, a mind, those aren't actually all the same thing in ancient Greece, but we'll just for now gloss over that. So Plato's idea was that, and it was a, it was a description of really about moral behavior and moral responsibility in humans. So the idea was that, you know, the human psyche can be described with a um, uh, metaphor of two horses and a charioteer. So one horse for instincts, um, like um, feeding and fighting and fleeing and uh, reproduction. I'm trying to control my salty language. <laughs> um, which apparently they print in England. Like I actually tossed off a fairly- which, F, S? Yeah, which F, one? F, uh, okay. F, yeah. 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 I was like, you printed that. I couldn't believe you printed that. <laughs> Without like the stars there, or whatever. No, no, no. There was full print. Okay, yeah. They great. also printed the a B word and it was really wow. quite yeah. Well, Anyways. We should <laughs> we should we should uh learn something from England. Indeed. Anyways, but instincts. And then the other horse represents emotions, uh, and then the charioteer represents rationality, which controls, you know, the two beasts, right? And um fast forward you know, a couple of centuries. And uh, in the middle of the 20th century, uh, there was a very popular view of brain evolution, which suggested that you have this uh, reptilian core, like a lizard, an inner lizard brain uh, for instincts. And then wrapped around that evolved, on, layer on top of that evolved a limbic system for uh, in mammals, so the, the novelty was in a mammalian brain, which uh, bestowed mammals with, uh, gave them emotions, the capacity for emotions. And then um, uh, on top of that uh, evolved uh, a cerebral cortex, um, which in, in largely in primates, but, but um, very large in, in humans. Um, and it's not that I personally disagree. It's that as far back as the 1960s, but really by the 1970s, it was shown pretty clearly with, with evidence from molecular genetics, so peering into cells in the brain to look at the molecular makeup of genes, that the brain did not evolve that way. And the irony hmm. is that, um, you know, the the idea of the the three-layered brain with an inner lizard, you know, that hijacks your uh, hijacks your behavior and causes you to do and say things that uh, you would otherwise not, or maybe that you will regret later. That idea um, became very popular. Was popularized by uh, Carl Sagan in uh, *The Dragons of Eden*, which won a Pulitzer Prize in 1977 when it was already known pretty much in evolutionary neuroscience that the whole uh, narrative was a myth. So, well, the narrative is on the, the way it evolved, but do you, I mean, again, it's that problem of uh, it being a useful tool of conversation to say like, there's a lizard brain and there's a, like, if I get overly emotional on Twitter, that was the lizard brain and so on. Uh, but do you, no, so, I don't think it's useful. I it, think it's a. I think that is it is is it uh, is it useful? Is it accurate? I don't think it's accurate, and therefore I don't think it's useful. Got it. So I, here's what I would say. You know, I think that um, the way I think about philosophy and science is that they are useful tools for living, and in order to be useful tools for living, they have to help you make good decisions. The triune brain, as it's called, this, this three-layer brain, the idea that your brain is like an already baked cake and 
uh, you know, the cortex, the cerebral cortex, just layered on top like icing. Mm -hmm. um, the idea, that idea is the foundation of uh, the law in most Western countries. It's the foundation of uh, economic theory. And it large, and it's a great narrative. It sort of fits our intuitions about how we work. But it also, um, it's in addition to being wrong, it lets people off the hook for right. uh, for nasty behavior, you know. Um, and it also suggests that emotions can't be a source of wisdom, which they often are. Um, in fact, you you would yeah. not want to be around someone who didn't have emotions. That would be that's a psychopath. Right. I mean, that's not someone you you know want to want to really uh, have have that person deciding your outcome. So I guess my, and I could sort of go on and on and on, but my point is that um, I don't think, I don't think it's a useful narrative in the end. 